we kick off this afternoon with the uh, emergency lighting session, and Roger's going to start with uh, discussing responsibilities. Roger. Thanks, Ian. So, it's my pleasure to kick off this, uh, this quartet with um, a look at the legal uh, uh, responsibilities and um, the British standard uh, on emergency lighting shows how you can uh, um, uh, give recommendations on achieving these, uh, these legal requirements. For, um, to prepare myself, I read these, uh, these two documents, the actual statutory instrument 2005, or the RRO, which uh, um, uh, uh, sets out the legal requirements. And secondly, I read the British, uh, the British standard, which shows how to achieve them in terms of uh, uh, emergency lighting anyway. And what I intend to do, I, I photocopied some of the major uh, uh, clauses and paragraphs from these two standards, which I'm going to read out and uh, hopefully it uh, um, adds up to a picture of these two, uh, these two, these two documents. Uh, I will say that I will go through these uh, um, uh, descriptions, uh, let's say, unfiltered. I won't give any uh, uh, opinions or good or bad experiences uh, uh, for myself, with one exception. I, I just couldn't resist to add a personal comment, but uh, we get to that in a couple of slides' time. So the statutory instrument itself uh, uh, begins with the uh, requirement that where the premises are a workplace, the responsible person must ensure that any duty imposed by Articles 8 to 22 is complied with. Now, two points. <coughs> Firstly, the responsible person is actually the employer or the, 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 the building owner or occupier themselves. They have the legal responsibility. And Articles 8 to 22, well, these deal with uh, uh, fire, fire safety. So they deal with risk assessments, they look into the number of people, the number of young people, are there any dangerous uh, substances present. Uh, the firefighting equipment, uh, uh, also the maintenance, essential maintenance needs of them are detailed. The routes to emergency exits, uh, uh, are, they, are they adequate, are they clear? And then it goes into uh, procedures like uh, uh, safety drills that the, uh, the competent person must uh, uh, oversee and, uh, and provide training for. Now, where it comes to the uh, uh, enforcement, uh, two points. Let's look at the who and uh, uh, the how. In terms of who does the enforcement, it's the fire and rescue authority in the area where the premises uh, are. This is dealt with in uh, uh, part three of the statutory instrument. And then section 27 uh, details the powers that they have. So an inspector may do anything necessary for the purpose of carrying out this order including he has the right to, to enter premises and make uh, uh, inspections, uh, take records, uh, uh, take samples for flammability testing, this sort of thing. If, in his opinion, there are uh, uh, risks exist, then he can serve an alterations notice. So this sets out what constitute the risks in uh, uh, his authority, and then the response to that should be an assessment on those risks and a proposed action plan how they're going to, to, to be dealt with. And then if the, uh, this, this action plan in, in, in content or execution uh, uh, doesn't uh, satisfy the enforcing, he thought, or enforcing authority, they still think the risks exist, then uh, they can serve an enforcement notice. And this really has teeth now. So they give uh, a time period, usually 28 days, that uh, uh, to, to uh, uh, rectify the, the, the risks that are still outstanding. And if still there's uh, uh, shortcomings, then uh, a prohibition notice can be served. And this uh, uh, restricts uh, or even actually prohibits uh, 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 usage of the premises. And then part four spells out the failure to comply with articles 8 to 22 or any of the notices which I've just been describing is, uh, is punishable by, by fines or imprisonment for the responsible person who, remember, is the uh, end user or, uh, or building owner. Okay, so now um, I move to, to uh, uh, the British standard which sets out how to comply with articles 8 to 22 in terms of uh, lighting anyway. And it begins with a direct link. So 
UK legislation, that's just what I've been discussing, uh, imposes a duty on persons, including employers and other persons with control of premises, to carry out risk assessments and to take such precautions as to ensure, as far as reasonably practicable, the safety of the occupants. <coughs> and then again, it sets out the, uh, the who and the how. And the how is, uh, well, that's what goes into, you know, provision of uh, um, safe means of escape, emer emergency escape routes, exits, uh, uh, <coughs> signage, and so on. And the who, and again, we meet the uh, 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 um, uh, responsible and competent uh, uh, person with this time uh, 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 more of a description, the competent person, a person with relevant current training and experience, and with access to the requisite tools, equipment and information, and capable of carrying out a defined task. Now these tasks, as you can see, they can be designer-oriented or installer or verifier, and I come on to, to detail those uh, uh, towards the end of this presentation. And then the responsible person, this is uh, the person that's delegated, individual, who is, who is responsible for the provision and operation of appropriate emergency escape lighting. Of course, if there isn't the, the uh, um, uh, knowledge or resource uh, uh, within the company, then the responsible person can appoint a, a, a competent person from a specialist uh, uh, maintenance company, for example, to carry out the risk assessments or the uh, uh, oversee the maintenance and so on. So now we move, uh, so yeah, this is, this, is, this is the bit where I can't resist the face. <coughs> so section four uh, uh, begins from the onset with a call for uh, consultation. Uh, I quote, consultation between the responsible person, the owner, developer and or occupier of the premises, the architect, the lighting designer, the installation contractor, the enforcing authorities, e.g. the building control authority, the electricity supply or distributor and any others concerned should be arranged at a very early stage. And here I, I just wonder how often this actually uh, uh, takes place, which makes me uh, sweat a little bit. Okay, so what should the consultation topics be? Well, these are set out in sections 10.2 uh, to 10.6. And very briefly, 10.2, to determine requirements, so verify escape routes, establish uh, uh, positions of the alarm points, other firefighting equipment, escape route signs, and so on. 10.3 uh, is the design of the illuminants, so obviously the, the, the positioning of the emergency lighting luminaires on a plan and uh, verify mounting heights, but also you have to investigate uh, uh, the, the deterioration in output, uh, I look at the effects of uh, uh, volt drop, etc. 10.4 is the design of the system, so what type of system, for example, is it central, uh, um, central battery or, or, or self-contained, uh, and then choose the wiring system and the, there's a lot of detail on cable support or uh, jointing of ducting, uh, uh, this sort of thing. Uh, 10.5, this is the design of the uh, circuit protection and controls. So this is on establishing the site of the equipment, like uh, isolators and, and uh, switches. Also, by the way, the labelling of them. Is it emergency lighting or standby lighting, uh, etc. Then finally, 10.6 is the installation, operating and uh, commissioning instructions. Normally these are documented in a, in a manual, which, uh, which I come on to. So following this, the design and so on, we get to the and, and installation, we get to the handover. And um, this is, of course, from the competent person to the responsible person. And uh, there's three main handovers, which I'll detail one at a time. Various completion certificates, the uh, logbook, which I alluded to in the last slide, and a schedule of trainings and tests and inspections. So first of all, the uh, uh, completion certificate. Uh, H1, by the way, the numbers, uh, so these refer to an appendix. So in Appendix H, there's some model certificates for, uh, for completion. And the first one is a kind of general declaration. 
and this is signed by the, the, the responsible person. So his details are recorded in it, and, and, and basically he's declaring that the emergency lighting complies with the British standard, 5266. And it's handed over, it must be accompanied with um, photometric design data, then three more detailed uh, um, uh, um, certificate, completion certificates, and the, uh, the test logbook. So let's look at the uh, more detailed certificates. Now I come back to the areas of specialism, design, installation, and verification. <laughs> so H2, model certificate H2, this details with the uh, design following H1, the general certificate. And so this will show escape routes, uh, uh, position of fire alarm points, this sort of thing. Then the installation, this shows that the system conforms to the agreed design. So certificate one, the design, certificate two, have the luminaires been mounted correctly, uh, escape signage in the right place, etc. So the design followed by the installation, does the installation follow the design? And then H4, logical progression, is the verification. You have the design, you have the installation, does it work? This is the critical thing at the end of the day, and this is normally proven by a, a commissioning test. Indeed, you can't hand on these certificates until you've, uh, you've done the, the commissioning test. Okay, the next uh, handover is the, um, ah, sorry, I've just been discussing this slide and it wasn't there, so th these are the three detailed uh, certificates, H2, H3, H4. I, I make a fool of myself at least once, so that's that out of the way. Now, Appendix uh, J, this is the uh, emergency lighting uh, uh, logbook. And um, uh, yeah, this is, the, the, again, a handover from the competent person to the uh, uh, responsible person. And it has these 12 main headings, which obviously I can't go through in detail, but um, skimming through them. Uh, number one is the contractual and legal details, so that's the name and address of the installation, the owner's details, uh, are there any lease details which are relevant and so on. Two is the, the project uh, brief, so this will give the specific requirements that the emergency uh, uh, system uh, uh, addresses. Three is the uh, risk analysis, so here you would detail is there any dangerous uh, processes or toxic materials uh, uh, present. Four is the equipment detail, so here you'll put uh, manufacturers, model numbers, etc. Five is uh, the design or modified design. If you modified it, what were the reasons behind uh, uh, the modified selections? Uh, six is the calculations carried out. Seven is drawings, schematics, etc. Eight is the, the commissioning data, basically the results of the commissioning test, which I've just been talking about. Uh, 9, 10, and 11, uh, uh, this operation, maintenance, spare parts, these are all cross-reference to the uh, uh, manufacturer data. And finally, 12, disposal, so they would go into uh, uh, de decommissioning uh, uh, details. And then the final handover was a set of procedures for uh, routine inspections and tests. And this is dealt with in, uh, in chapter 12. And again, there's model uh, certificates given in uh, an appendix, appendix uh, M. And three uh, model, let's say, periodic inspection and test certificates are uh, um, uh, recommended. The first details the system, the site, the responsible person again. The second one uh, uh, logs the, the actual testing done. So you can see uh, a C at the top, that's the commissioning uh, initially. Uh, M is the monthly uh, um, uh, functional test that you do, and if I turn a bit more, it would have come to A. That's the uh, the full full duration test, so initial commissioning, the monthly uh, um, uh, functional tests, and then the annual uh, um, uh, full duration test, whether it's done manually or automatically. And then the final one is a fault uh, uh, action record, and uh, actually this. Uh, with meticulous planning uh, leads straight into um, uh, what Les will talk about picking up from these certificates. Thank you.